Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Lunch and Learn. I'm Lauren Smith with the International Franchise Association, and we have a great 30 minutes lined up for you. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that we are recording today's webinar and we'll make it available later this evening on community.franchise.org. If you have any questions for today's speakers, please add them to the chat box and they will be addressed toward the end. Today's topic is the four cornerstones of a solid franchise marketing strategy, and it is brought to us by Uberall. Here to provide today's discussion is Alyssa Trenkamp, VP of Brand Marketing and Communications, and Jennifer Stevenson, Head of Product Strategy. Thank you all for joining us today, and thank you to Uberall for sponsoring today's Lunch and Learn. I'll go ahead and turn things over to you. Great. Thanks, Lauren, for that introduction. We're so happy to be here. We always love doing a good webinar with IFA and the community here. So thanks for thanks for being here with us today. So if you've been to one of our webinars before, you know we always love a good analogy. So today we're going to start with a quick story, a story of two houses, one built on sand and one built on stone. The two houses were fine at first, but when a storm hit, the house built on sand wasn't able to weather it as well. And this is true for marketing and marketing strategies as well. What we find is when we have a solid foundation, we're able to weather just about anything. And COVID is definitely proof of that. When we when we went through COVID, it was the businesses that had those solid foundations that we were, were able to adapt and, and modify their strategies quickly to meet changing consumer expectations. So with that, we um, at Uberall decided to run a survey, a survey to understand what this new normal looked like and what the new benchmark for local digital marketing is today. Um, we wanted to define what maturity was in this new landscape, benchmark where businesses are at today, and unveil some untapped opportunities that businesses could use to leapfrog their competition, especially knowing we're headed into a pretty competitive marketplace with a potential recession looming. So we surveyed 459 businesses, location-based businesses with 26 or more locations. We asked 13 questions to get an indicator of their maturity. So questions like, are you responding to reviews? Do you have local social pages? Are you on Google business? Um, hopefully you are Google business profile. And what are you doing on Google business profile? Um, and then we did the survey in five countries to get a global perspective, the US, Canada, Germany, France, and the UK. And then out of that, we, we came up with one maturity model. So to set the stage for today's webinar, we wanna kind of take you through what this model was based on and what the maturity model looks like. It has five stages. The early stages are really kind of baseline today, right? They're things that most businesses have. If you're a new business, maybe you're starting this, but if you're an established businesses, business, most businesses are doing things in one and two. So stage one is just your basic block and tackle corporate digital strategy, having a corporate website, having some corporate social, having some corporate search and ads and display and things like that. Um, stage two is actually getting into the local side of things. So now we're starting to look at manually managing your Google business profile. Maybe you're listed on a few um, sites like like depending on what your industry is. So if you're in the legal industry, you might have a few law directories you're on, something like that. Um, as we get into stage three, this is where it gets more managed. So this is where you're using a tool like Uberall to help you manage your listings at scale across multiple locations. Um, so this includes things like local social, Google posts, um, and review management, responding to reviews on these platforms. Stage four is optimized local marketing. So this is where we're getting into things like how do I convert all this all this traffic and interest and intent in my brand into actual revenue for my business. So this includes things like a store locator on your corporate website, a local SEO web page tied to that store locator, online conversion tools. So to book an appointment or to order online or to take that next step to getting towards the business, whether it's clicking through for directions. Mm -hmm. It includes chat bots that are localized. So on a local level, things that allow me to interact with the business. If I have a question that might in, like um, be a blocker to making getting me to take that next step. What are the local store hours? Do you have what I'm looking for in stock? So those chat bots can really help further the conversion path. And then in-store digital, um, meaning that if you're in the store, actually having QR codes and things like that, that drive you back to the digital property if you have questions. And then stage five is where we're really surprising and delighting customers, right? This is things like online inventory, what's available in that store, available to look up, online menu related to the local store, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, dynamic data, what are live wait times and things like that. So this is like much more advanced that usually is 
a little bit above and beyond. A lot of businesses may be dabbling in some of this, but maybe not doing all of it, right? And this is a sliding scale. So you may be doing something in stage five, but not in not doing some things well in the basic areas. So you might be somewhere in the middle. Um, so with that, I actually think it would be really interesting to open it up to a poll. So Lauren, if you don't mind pushing the poll live at this point, and we'll, we want to get an indication of where you think you're at today on this maturity scale. So if you guys can take a minute to do this, and while I do that, just to take a break from talking for a second, <laughs> Jennifer, do you want to say anything on this maturity model and what your thoughts are? Yeah, while you're talking, hi everyone. By the way, I'm Jennifer Stevenson. I had a product strategy at Uberall. Um, yeah, Alyssa, while you were talking, I was thinking, you know, franchise businesses are so different and so complex in so many ways, depending on the industry and, you know, um, just basically the the structure of, of the business. So really who owns marketing, right? Like I'm looking through this and thinking, if I'm a franchise owner, I have, you know, a few stores or restaurants. Um I may really want to do my own local marketing um, that may or may not be prohibited by corporate. So how do I, um, you know, get to stage five if, you know, potentially I'm blocked by corporate? So hopefully we'll get into a little bit of that in this presentation, um, because I do think that throughout this maturity model, as you say, there's different things that may, that you may have real strengths in that you're doing today. But I think the overall theme that we want to talk about is how you collaborate with uh, a corporate entity if you're a franchise owner and how a corporation and the corporate marketing department can better, um, you know, arm and facilitate the, the local um, store manager or franchise owner to also have some, you know, authentic local marketing and autonomy to do their own marketing. Really good point, Jennifer. Um, Lauren, do you want to push those results live? I'm so curious. Okay, so good. This is kind of what I expected. Most people are right smack dab in the middle, threes mm -hmm. and fours, um, and then a little bit on the advanced side. So that's really cool to see. I think in the franchise industry, we do see a bit higher levels of maturity. So I'm going to reveal what our survey said, actually, um, to give you guys a sense of of where you're you're at, maybe, relative to some of your competition in the franchise industry. So the survey, we we obviously had a big um, a showing of franchise businesses. So of the franchise businesses that took the survey, they're ranking 53% out of, out of 100. So they're, they're just above like the average in terms of all the things they're doing that could get, make them 100% out of 100. And non-franchise are at 47. So we do see a slight level higher maturity in the franchise industry. And when we dig into that, we actually see, just as Jennifer was saying, that there's a lot more empowerment of the local operators and managers, which makes sense in a franchise business model. Um, so that's that's really good to see. So you guys are are um, measuring right in that that sweet spot, three, four, so right in that fifty to seventy five percent range. Any thoughts on the the responses, Jennifer? There. Yeah, no, I, it's exactly what we were saying, and. I'm I'm interested, Alyssa, in um, why we called out Crumble and Ulta. Yeah, so I put those on there just because we wanted to kind of show some of what good looks like with a couple of business business examples. So Crumble, we put Crumble on there because they're doing some pretty amazing things with online community building or local community building, um, specifically really at a corporate brand level. So they could be doing a lot more to localize their efforts, but they're generating organic local buzz about their brand in a way that is really far and above and beyond, but they're not as high as Ulta because they're not doing as much to optimize their local presence. If you dig into like their Google business profiles and some of their local social efforts, they're not as, as um, tightened up as other, other industries. Ulta Beauty is on there because they're doing some pretty cool stuff with augmented reality where they have an app that allows you to try on a look before you go out and buy it. So you can actually, and they have like influencers that are making specific lipsticks and things, and you can try on that influencer's lipstick color and then go buy it at your local Ulta Beauty store. So they're doing some really cool things to connect online digital experiences to in-store purchases or online purchases, wherever you prefer to buy. So it's a lot of a lot of really advanced stuff that Ulta Beauty is doing. Anything to add there or expand on with other examples that you've seen, Jennifer? Um, I would like
like to get into the crumble cookies a little bit because I think one of the things we're seeing here and you guys um, feel free to jump in and put uh, questions in the chat um, as we go along. But this this idea of the maturity model, right? I think stage five is looking at, like you're saying, everything that's potential and out there. And so a franchise owner on their own isn't going to, you know, potentially do AR, VR capability, like try on capability, right? That's something you partner with corporate on who works with an agency potentially um, to make that happen, right? But the connection point um, and driving that that desire, because we know that statistically um, you get 28% more purchases when you have an AR component to online shopping, right? Whether that's putting it in your in your um, living room to see where the couch goes or looking at Nike shoes and, and do they look good on my feet? So these these seem like very next generation things, but it it is something to really think about if you're not doing it today to talk to um, corporate about like what is our or sort of AR strategy for the future. So this sounds, this, the, the metaverse and those kind of words that you hear are actually coming and are here today and many retailers are making use of them. Yeah, it's so true. My kids are all about trying on Nike shoes in the metaverse. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all good stuff and very fun and interesting and real today. So let's dive into our meat of our topic today. So based on this benchmark and understanding where businesses are at today, we also uncovered a lot of opportunity. Like the fact that most businesses are somewhere in the middle, I mean, there's so much room for improvement. So really we bucketed this into four cornerstones managed local digital presence, which includes managing your business on places like Google, Apple maps, Waze, Yelp, so on and so forth, the big ones and the small ones, local social, which includes things like Facebook, Instagram, um, next door, manage local reputation. So any site that allows for local reviews, managing that reputation on a local level. And then what we're kind of hinting at is this corporate local balance. Like where do you have corporate, you know, control the message and how can you create authentic local connections at the local level by empowering local operators and owners? So with that, um, let's, did you have any questions on this one or anything you wanted to add here, Jennifer? Uh -huh. Well, I guess my question, and maybe some some listeners have it too, is around, you know, there's four cor cornerstones, but are they all created equal? Yeah, right? that's so, a good one. Yeah, so do we, uh, do we say that, you know, manage local presence and making sure that all your data is accurate for every location is, is an important as um, local social, right? Or, uh, you know, what mix is the right mix? So I would say we put the four on here for a reason because they're all pretty important. And depending on how competitive your industry is in, like if you're in the QSR industry, they're a very competitive industry, right? You have to be kind of everywhere and have every every stone unturned so that you can can show up and get chosen. And so I would say for those types of businesses that are in highly competitive markets, probably all four of these things are pretty important to be on top of. But for some industries, it may vary a tiny bit where something may not be as, as important to one industry as it is another. I think the thing that's also always interesting for uh, franchise businesses is how much the mix of doing these things impacts how you show up in, you know, the top three results on Google. So um, you wouldn't think that having a local social strategy would help you show up in the top three results, but it really does, right? It's not just keywords. It's also if you, if you have um, good content, Google, the algorithm ranks you higher. So um, Google looks at local content. So if I'm doing a near me search, right, um, and I'm interested in in something you have a Facebook page on uh, and you're a sneaker shop on Melrose. I live in Hollywood, California. Um, if you're a sneaker shop on Melrose and you list out your inventory and I do a search because I wanna know where, you know, some Air Jordans are near me. Um, if you have, you know, social posting around that, that will be considered by Google. So these all work together, I think is what we're really trying to say. Um, it's not just one or the other, that uh, today in the way that consumers find local businesses, you need all of this. Yeah, I agree. It is really important. And also getting chosen, you know, people scroll your social feed to see if you're a relevant business that they should consider. So it matters there and it matters that you have, a, you know, reviews and, and, are, and are responding to those, whether good or bad, right? 
So let's dive into the um, four cornerstones a bit more. So cornerstone number one, manage local digital presence. As we talked about, it's managing your presence on those key sites plus more. Um, what we found in our survey is that 32% of businesses are still doing this on a manual, like manually managing all their listings, which was pretty surprising. And what was more surprising is when we dug into the findings related to Google business profile, which we know drives a huge percentage of traffic, 90, 96%, depending on your source, to local businesses, um, it was really surprising what what opportunities are untapped right now. So I'm gonna let Jennifer talk a little bit more about the untapped opportunity with Google Business Profile. Yeah, this is one where I think we wanna get the, the corporate um, marketing team involved. This is an area around like listings so that that real source of, are all my locations up to date? Do it, you know, do they have all the information they need? And and typically this is not something that you want every franchise owner to be on their own with because it makes such an important impact on if you show up in search or not. So this is one where you do need to have some corporate control and ensure that all of the location information is um, organized and centralized in one place uh, and that that information is sent out consistently. You get ding not just on Google, but you know, Bing and um, Yelp and, you know, all these different places where there would be listing information about um, your location, restaurant, et cetera. If that's not up to date and consistent across everywhere where a consumer might be searching or trying to find that information, even over Alexa, if you ask Alexa, if that information is different, um, you're going to get dinged on the results, right? So you need to have consistent information. And so we were really surprised to see that so many, um, so many businesses didn't have their updated business hours. Like there's nothing more frustrating than a consumer turning up at a, you know, at a, a front door of a business and, and it's closed because of a holiday or some, uh, you know, some business hour closure and not knowing, right? They're not gonna come back. You know, or if they do, they're gonna be very angry. <laughs> so, you know, these little things are like low hanging fruit that if you just have this information centralized, and have a, a tool that sends it out and can ensure that every channel is updated all the time and there's one source of truth, you know, this is this is this is going to um, improve your visibility and presence throughout, you know, the internet, um, wherever you know consumers are searching. The other thing that we were just so surprised about are like the levels, and just speaking on on Google specifically, the levels of um of like Q and A left to uh, sort of crowdsourcing. So if you go and just do an audit, if you know there's a lot of digital marketers on this this call, if you go and just do an audit, um, spot check the, your different locations and see, take a look at the Google Q and A and see who's answering the Google Q and A. Right, this might be an area where you want to collaborate with local franchise owners to give them some control over answering local questions. Because um, one of the things we find is that uh, you know you have you have um, answers there that you may not want to have as a brand. Um, so just double check that. Same with Google Posts. This is free advertising. Google Posts is where you can really put out some authentic local information. And um, you, know, you can have templates uh, created for Google Posts uh, that make it easy for local operators to respond and, and post these on their Google profile. So um, there's no reason not to do it. It's free. Um, and same with Google Chat, which is more of a new feature, but something that, um, you know, you'd never want a consumer reaching out to a business and not getting a reply, but 72% of the time, it looks like that's what's happening. Yeah. And that one's a big one because like, if I'm just looking for a quick answer to decide whether or not I'm going to come to your location, do you have this specific product in stock or something like that? That would literally change whether or not I come to your location. Yeah, or, no or go online or something. So it is it is a big deal because that's a big loss of opportunity there, I'd say. Um, we did have a question come in. It's a little unrelated to this, but I, I think it's good to, to bring it in. Rick asks, are there any best practices that franchisers are using to add franchise recruitment messaging alongside consumer messaging? So, you know, recruiting franchise owners, I'm assuming, versus, you know, messaging to consumers. Yeah, yeah, we've seen that. We have uh, we have customers that do both that as well as local hiring. Uh, so those uh, they do advertising for local hiring. 
um, as well as put out ads uh, with, through Facebook specifically because of the targeting that you can do, targeting specific types of people. Um, so employment ads, exactly. Um, and as well as franchise uh, recruitment. Great, thanks. Thanks for the question, by the way. Um, and Patricia for, for weighing in. We appreciate the interactive interactivity. It makes it a little bit more fun for us too. Um, so number two, focus on local social. So here, 34% of multi-location businesses report a lack of local social strategy. So before we dig into this, um, Jennifer, would love your to get your take on what the local side of social really looks like. When we talk about local social, what do we really mean by that? Um, we have some examples. We'll dig into this a little bit more. Um, later on i know we got to be conscious of time but but essentially uh, the the lowest hanging fruit is ensure that every location you have has a facebook page because like we said not only does it um give you a more authentic local voice uh but a lot of the content you already have from your brand facebook page so it can just be replicated by the the location and then they can add their own you know flavor to it and spin to it or promotion or anything they're doing um but it also helps to get found when people are searching for specific things. So that's that's the number one thing if you take away anything is ensure that you have local Facebook pages. So do you wanna get into a little bit of the tips around how to level up your local social game? Sure. Um, so, you know, there's just as, you know, digital marketers, social marketers will tell you um, it's a volume play when it comes to organic social, right? You you want to be posting on a regular basis. And um, whether you choose to do this at the corporate level uh, and have a national message or the local level, uh, you know, there's there's a cadence to it and best practices around that. And I think that at Uber, all, that's one of the things that we really strive to do is, is create that foundation to make it easy for both corporations uh, and franchise owners to collaborate and work together to get that right mix of corporate brand message and local um, local flavor. So that's what we really encourage um, is to ensure that you're collaborating and doing that together. One of the things that is really important, whether you have 10 stores or 10,000 locations, is to ensure that you stay on top of those social comments. This can be a PR nightmare if you're not on top of them. And to really have a tool that allows you to um, understand what's being said in large volumes of comments and then being able to respond to the ones that are really important is becoming more and more um, valuable. And especially as we expand the channels of, of social, right? Um, where people are leaving comments, it becomes very difficult to get your arms wrapped around it without some sort of platform to help you do that. Yeah, I think yeah. some of our best clients are doing a really good job too of creating um, response templates and things that make that easy to do. They're also creating a great library of um, templates that can be used that are, you know, ongoing campaigns like hiring with our labor shortage, or like someone like Patricia mentioned, or they're looking at things like seasonal campaigns. Seasonal or campaigns. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of our best clients are doing um, some really cool stuff with local social to make it easy for local operators to really pick up the things that make sense for their market that they want to really push. Right. And this shouldn't be like you're, you're creating content from new, right? A lot of times you have this from news, um, e-newsletters that you're sending out or emails or, you know, uh, text messages, it should all be, you know, one and the same, right? And you can give these assets to the, you know, to the franchisees to, to, to post, or you can post it on their behalf. Yeah. Did you want to talk a little bit about paid too? I know we're a little bit short on time, but maybe a quick hit on that. Uh, I think paid is one of those things that, um, depending on your business is a, a must do now, particularly on channels like Instagram, uh, being able to show up in uh, the organic post feeds as well as stories and reels. Um, and yeah, local social should be customized and we'll get into a little bit. We have some examples of, of what that looks like. Uh, maybe we just jump into that. Uh, but yeah, so paid becomes extremely important. Um, uh, paid becomes extremely important uh, way to find exactly who you're looking for around your location. And, um, you know, talk, talk to us after, uh, cause that's like a whole nother webinar as yeah, far as like tactics like... and what to do there. <laughs> 
true. It's true. Um, yeah. I didn't want to derail, but I thought you might want to hit that quickly. So prioritize review response. That's the next one. So 41% of multi-location businesses don't respond to our reviews frequently enough. As a consumer, I personally have left reviews for businesses and just awaited a response. Like I left, I had a great experience, left a positive review and thought for sure they're going to get back to me because I matter to them and wait crickets. Don't, don't hear anything. So not only is it not feel good for a consumer to feel ghosted, but it also is, as Jennifer said earlier, really, really important for visibility in the Google three pack, which we know is super important. So it's one of the top factors reviews um, in ranking in the Google three pack. So let's talk a little bit about how businesses can prioritize review response, which is one of the biggest areas of opportunity. Yeah, I think this is another one where it becomes incredibly difficult to stay on top of it uh, without a platform or tool. And, you know, we're not saying you have to have Uber all, but you should have a tool for this because it, uh, or have an agency that helps you with it because it really, um, it is really hard to stay on top of it. And it really matters to your local presence and visibility on search. Uh, the reason why is Google uh, specifically, they, uh, you know, they prioritize businesses, the response um, rate and speed of response impacts the algorithm and if you get recommended. So not only does, you know, how many reviews you have impact if you get recommended, actually, if you're responding to reviews. So what they want to see, uh, what the Google algorithm wants to see is that you're on top of it and having a connection with your consumer and that you're a good business owner. Uh, so it, that really factors into these no text reviews. You think there's no point, right? There's no text. It's just a star rating, but over half of 55% uh, of Google um, reviews are just star only. So how do you keep up on that? Well, you know, you, you, you really do need to make the effort to do it. Um, also, replying to negative reviews, we find that um, statistically, a lot of times the consumer will come back and, and amend their review, right? So a lot of uh, people have questions about how do I get negative reviews down? Well, unless they're like egregious and completely wrong, Google's not going to take them off or Yelp isn't going to take them off. Um, so really, your best bet is to respond to the negative review and ensure that um, your your point of view is seen, right? Because the reviews can really impact whether people choose to frequent your business or not. Um, and and also, I mean, I, we're, we're short on time. And again, we could do a whole session on, on what to do with reviews because it's, it is incredibly important. There's a lot there. Um, you know, you can do um, review generation. The more positive reviews you have pushes down the negative reviews. So there's a lot of tricks you can do on a location by location basis, but the, the net result is you can choose to do this corporate um, controlled or at the franchise level, um, having templates and response templates becomes really handy and important um, to do it at scale. Yep, good points. And let's keep going. And I want to get to Patricia's question, which I know isn't here. So um, the one thing on the corporate local balance is that listings, not too surprising, 49% of businesses say their corporate team manages listings, but it was a little bit more surprising to see how heavily local social was managed by corporate. So we wanted to dig into that a little bit and give some examples. So I'm going to build this out just so we can just talk through it quickly. So do you want oh, to talk? Do you want to talk? Yeah. So Patricia, this is exactly what you were saying. So I think this does a good job of showing. Um, so Crumble Cookies is, uh, they just do brand level. Um, and you can see, hopefully, if you sort of really peer in at your screen, um, that it is a suite that only includes brand level information about a new product that they are rolling out. Um, they're encouraging people to go to the location, but they don't include any information in that, right? Um, so that is just pure brand. Uh, and they're creating a lot of great buzz, really good marketing there if you want to check them out. But it doesn't include that localization piece, right? And so what we're saying, um, just as a best practice, is you really should consider um, how to incorporate the, the locations and pull in a local message. And so you'll see uh, with Pinch a Penny, which is a pool um, and spa, they are pulling in the name. So it's like happy 4th of July from Wes McKinney, right? And so, <laughs> yeah, I know exactly, they're so good. Um, but so Wes McKinney, um, right? So that would get automatically generated through a dynamic field 
And so that's something that can just be pushed out at the corporate level, but has a has an element of, of local in it because the name's there. So when someone sees that um, Facebook uh, post, they'll, they'll know, okay, you're talking to me um, in McKinney, Texas. Uh, one, one customer we have, Smoothie King, um, does a great job of pulling in local um, businesses. So one of the things they do locally is they really partner with local, um, you know, baseball and volleyball teams. Um, and then they really give their locations the ability. And what they do is they, they encourage this type of partnership at the local level. They really have a local game going. And um, so they offer these different types of templates, depending on the different types of local events that uh, a location might be doing. And then all the, the, the location does is um, they post it or the, the corporation can post it on behalf of the location if they don't have a field marketer or the franchise owner doesn't have the capability or know how to do the post themselves um, and, and needs uh, corporate support. So that's the hybrid version where, uh, you know, just depending on your model, uh, you can make it look as local as possible. And then on the on the right end is the completely franchise owned. They do their own marketing. They don't coordinate at all with corporate. And this is one that we we don't actually recommend. We feel like corporate and franchise have to be working together to get the reach and the visibility um, and that local authenticity um, combined with brand control. So that's uh, that's the that's the one we recommend the most. Yeah. So let's just really quick. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, we hope we shared some insights on how to build a really solid foundation. Just to go back to our earlier analogy, where Jennifer and Alyssa, our emails are there. So feel free to yeah, reach out please. anytime. We're happy to answer any questions. We love this stuff. Um, we live and breathe it and we love local digital marketing. And then we're also going to be sharing a link to the report um, as a follow on to this webinar. So you'll get a copy of that that you can dig into with and get a little bit more detail on some of those untapped opportunities you can take advantage of. We hope you enjoyed today's webinar. I, Lauren, I don't think we have time for questions. <laughs> At least Sorry, this guys. was a little interactive. So I think we covered some questions as we went and we really enjoyed uh, the conversation today. So thank you. Thank you yeah, so thanks. much. Thank you, thanks, everyone. For, this was excellent content and excellent feedback from all of you. We really do appreciate it. Again, this webinar was recorded and along with the presentation deck will appear on our website early this evening. You'll be able to find that at community.franchise.org. Thank you very much again to Alyssa, Jennifer, and the Uberall team. And again, thank you to everyone for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day and stay safe and healthy. Bye.